So in 2021, I wanted to have um, more conversations, just um, thinking out loud and um, promoting, not promoting, getting out my thoughts and my ideas and everything else and getting it out because the world's going bloody crazy and um, it, uh, I think I probably need to speak. Um, so as I do speak though, I will always remind you don't believe anything that I say because um, they're just my viewpoints, you know, just things that I've learned. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about um, universal basic income and the state of the world economy, but without actually going into all of the details or even being technically correct about this, what I'm talking about, just my understanding and a few thoughts and things that I understand. And the first thing I want to say is that um, I'm all about consciousness. I'm all about of all of us waking up. I'm all about, um, you know, okay, who am I really? Really, really. So if you if you listen to Eckhart Tolle, the author of The Power of Now, probably the most profoundly free man on the planet right now, he um, he says our primary purpose is to know ourselves as source. Um, our secondary purpose is to do something with it. So our primary purpose is to know ourselves as source. What does that mean? Well, it's not tomato sauce or, you know, anything like that. It's to know ourselves as the same energy that in religion we would call God. If you're a new age, you'd call it the universe or spirit or whatever it may be. Um, if you're a quantum scientist, you might say it's the energy behind all things. I think um, Albert Einstein talked about the intelligence behind all things. So to know yourself as source basically means to, um, to know yourself, um, to feel and recognize yourself at a feeling level, by the way, not a thinking level, at a direct experience level, as the same energy that's behind life itself. So behind all the story, behind the story of life and behind the situations of life, um, the ups and downs, the ins and outs, the goods and bads, the rights and wrongs, the successes, failures, wins and losses, um, the hots and colds, the fats and skinnies, dumb and smart, you know, um, rich and poor, all that sort of stuff. Behind all that judgment and assessment and value, valuation of things via the external world, behind all that, there's an energy. <laughs> and that energy is um, life itself. Um, and I was lucky enough and fortunate enough to go through some crazy experiences as an athlete to then tap into that every now and then where I'd feel like the life life was on my side. I would be racing other people and I felt like the ocean, the universe, she was like the mother was on my side and, and things would flow for me. So somewhere I had all the elements together for a few moments and I'd get this flow. And of course, of course, when I finished tapping into that every now and then, what do you think that I wanted to study or research was what's that what is the zone you know what is this effortless effort what is this magical place and as you research that and you explore it and you discover your own your own id your identity yourself your ego and you pull it apart pick it apart and enough of it dissolves um, I don't claim to be ego free that's for sure um, enough of it my, my ego my ego might but enough of it as enough of it dissolves um, you just feel beyond that form consciousness or form identity of who you think you are and you start to actually experience life um, from a place of knowing yourself like oh and feeling and knowing others so it's kind of like the beingness in me recognizes and sees the beingness in other people in life in the trees in in behind everything actually just sitting in life it's like in the backdrop of life um, so that's a level of enlightenment um, because there's even an ego form of enlightenment which is this magical thing but enlightenment is simply becoming more enlightened lighter seeing things more clearly it's a level of enlightenment to suddenly feel and experience things more from a place of I'm directly experiencing and connecting with people. So the beingness in me recognizes the beingness in you. When you do yoga, which I do love, and did a first yoga class for, for months this morning, which was fantastic. And um, and when you finish a yoga class, I often say namaste. And namaste basically 
breaks down to the light in me honors and recognizes the light in yourself so enlightenment the light the beingness so so that's what spirituality is in lay terms is actually becoming more aware of ourselves at a non-mind level and a non-body level body being third dimension or third dimension density of energy and the mind being more fourth dimensional it's not physical it's not spiritual it's kind of like this place that you're doing your thinking um, from an energetic perspective I'm not talking about the brain and the levels of the brain and the levels of the mind subconscious all that sort of stuff I'm just talking about from an energetic perspective the mind feels like a very worry thing compared to the soul and the spirit so um, not only do we have a mind that's pretending to have all the answers for the spirit which is pretty hilarious um, the heart probably best recognizes what the spirit wants or needs and how to best serve it in self and in others um, it talks straight to spirit the heart does um, at a level of feeling so the mind has all these answers and promises a lot of things and everything else so we not only have our own mind trying to solve the problem and build an identity and a personality to, to succeed and get ahead and I'll tell that story another time about what I discovered about myself and phew, the ins and outs of the competitive beast and all that sort of stuff um, and the separation that occurs and the pain and the suffering that that, that, that creates that occurs after that um, so not only do we have the individual mind but we begin to vibrationally attract each other at a mind level as well so we all it's like hooking up to a grid of mind where we're all thinking on the same level and then you get group minds more than one person could be in your relationship could be in your family could be in your your city you know Boston Boston strong I think it was you know could be in um, your state your country could be with your football team could be uh, with your religion your gender your sexuality um, your political party so we get group minds you're, you're all um, your wealth level your um, level um, your education your occupation so there's all these group minds as well which once you become aware of energy and the oneness of it all you realize it's all like a little bit of a grid and a pattern and all sorts of different stuff and so our mind our own fears and our own insecurities and our need for more control or safety or love or understanding or acknowledgement hooks us into the fear of the overall and now we'll do whatever it takes to get it and sometimes we do deals so-called deals with the devil where you actually deals with the unconscious where you agree to do something even subconsciously unconsciously because you think it's going to help you and they're in moments of need we, we pull in other energies that go I'll make you feel strong you know no no more mr. nice guy be you're gonna be angry from now on and oh yeah I'm not gonna care about what anyone else thinks so we're in these grids and these minds and we're personally interacting with a whole lot so the long story short is that when you become aware of energy you start to become aware of all the different way, ways in which it's um, it's the frequency of the way in which, in which it's vibrating so Nikola Tesla said you want to understand the secrets of the universe think in terms of energy frequency and vibration everything is energy and the vibration the frequency of the vibration of that energy um, denotes what's occurring like attracts like all this sort of stuff so we can change a lot from understanding that one thing Einstein also said you cannot solve a problem on the same level of mind that it was created in fact some levels I'm adding this some levels appear that you can only change them um, with no mind at all with heart and spirit so anyway that's that's that um, my point is that with all this stuff going on we're gravitating around all these different energies and we're actually ending up we're actually in a system in a system of energy in a system of doing things via the mental via the mind via the in and out that that it's transactionally based it's not relationally based it's transactionally based and um, it's not about the betterment of people with unknowingly it's often about um, the betterment of ourself serving ourself um, how can it's not necessarily what's in it for me it's it's starts off a little less nefarious than that it starts off something more like um, 
um, how can I get a little of that? Or why am I always the one that's left out? Or why do I have have nothing? So trying to keep this as quick as I can. So we're hooking ourselves back in our system with all these feelings of lack and, and thinking that, that our mind's got a solution that's going to solve the problem, etc. Doesn't happen, doesn't work. Um, when you solve the problem, it's only temporary and it comes back again anyway. So that's that. Now we're in this system where we're all doing this with each other. So we agree that we'll all, we, without knowing it, we agree that we'll all be a little bit unconscious and we'll all be, if you do that for me, I'll do this for you and everything else. So it's a lot of short term and a lot of win-win solutions created sometime, sometimes through these agreements. But most times they're underpinned by a sense of a lack of, of understanding who we really are, what we're really capable of, what we can create without actually grabbing onto things without being transactional by being more relational interrelational and working with each other so that's a, a shifting scale you can be doing a bit of that some of that all of that not much of that none of that you know anyway we're in this transactional thing and this system is ripe for exploiting because those that are more aware and less desperate and have more room and space you could say it opens the opportunity for them to be more, if they had this in their system, a little bit more psychopathic, a little bit more sociopathic, a little bit more narcissistic, and a little bit more extremely like, wow, if I can control, if I give all these people something they want, and they all give me what I want, um, I can get market share and I can increase this and this and this and then I can be looking out the window of a beautiful luxury chateau in the Swiss Alps at Christmas time you know and stunning views and and I can be um, having people wait after me and I can be skipping the queues and I can be all this sort of stuff so this greed power control comes from a want and a desire what I want what I need what I want a little more of and then ultimately um, this is what grows into a force in of its own a group mind almost an entity of energy that's like I'll do whatever it takes to maintain that so I'll now control everything I'll manipulate now if somebody's truth or speaking a truth re um, threatens my hold on that reality that I'm benefiting from without even knowing it I could fight to the hilt to you know, some people could do it consciously, other people could do it unconsciously. They just find themselves fighting to maintain their control. Now, this is a really, really interesting thing because um, I've just gone from our own self-desire and our own insecurities right up to now we could have groups of people, small groups of individuals that have the ability, the resources, the knowledge and the desire, knowingly or unknowingly, to end up controlling a whole lot of other people. So... That's quite fascinating because now we have bigger problems developing. This has been going on for a long time on the planet, this sort of stuff. Um, not blaming anybody or accusing anybody, but this unconsciousness um, and our lack and our need at, a, at an individual level, we hand our sovereignty over to these big corporate corporations and organizations that promise with the next can of fizzy drink or with the next pair of tight jeans or the next um, flight to some place that everything's gonna be better. So we begin to actually um, see all these opportunities to get more of what we want. But actually when we do, we're doing a deal with these people that means we get stuck in the system, stuck under a system that they could be controlling. Got a little bit of forward driving here. Um, stuck under a system that they in fact could be controlling and we're stuck in. So once again, I hope you can feel what I'm saying. Don't believe anything I say, but... Um, We've not now all of a sudden gone from just a little something more that I want, some love, understanding, some free time, you know, a safe place for my family. It can come to right down to really beautiful, heartfelt things that we then set ourselves up to be controlled because someone else has got what we want and there's a set of rules we have to follow to get it. So this self-serving thing feeds an individual entity which feeds a greater entity which causes a lot of problems so now the inequity I've got to the point so we're in a system if we don't see that system um, and work with it without needing it and potentially even break it apart eventually via love and connection and collaboration and some real true spiritedness um, 
then we end up serving the system as well. And no matter what we do, even if we're a good person, we're unknowingly, unwittingly contributing to the whole. So now it's just at the back of Christmas and New Year. Oh, the, the emotion sitting inside of me, the, the uh, inequity that's going on on the planet right now. It's been going on for a long, long time, but it's getting worse and worse and worse. Last year we had the COVID situation and it's got worse and worse and worse since that. More people have lost what they built up. The middle class shrunk and a lot dropped into what is referred to as the lower class. Um, and that's increasing. The people that knew what they're doing, a lot of billionaire wealth increased. Some just jumped on opportunities. Some might have been a part of seeing the opportunity before it even happened. Who knows? There's all those viewpoints out there. Um, it's certainly worth considering. Um, so the inequity and the amount of people that have next to nothing is growing and the amount of pain and suffering is growing. Now remember at the start of our need for more is the lack, is the pain and suffering. So while we get more, often in the system, someone else gets less. Not always, but often that's the way it works. And someone else at the top gets more and someone else at the bottom gets less and the middle class doing okay, generally. They're a bit smarter, they're working it, they're willing, they work hard, they do all this sort of stuff and they have some opportunities and they make it work. So there's this thing being floated around universal basic income and it says that there's people all around the world that can't afford shelter, they can't afford food, they can't afford all sorts of different things. If we're in a one world system, um, and we went through a great reset, you know, discussed at the World Economic Forum. Hello, interesting these people are discussing us and have control of us. That's quite fascinating in itself. Um, that, you know, um, if we could provide a universal system and a universal basic income, then people could do what they're passionate about. And people could actually spend more time because they had food, housing, shelter and everything. Um, they could spend more time doing the things they really loved and be passionate and live a creative life and all that sort of stuff. And doesn't that sound wonderful? Or is that the devil in disguise? Um, it appears that when you follow all those models all the way through, and some of them connect back to communism and socialism and all sorts of other things, but when you follow those models all the way through, um, there's not many uh, running those models through a system that comes out extrapolating those models out to say that what you get is more people happy, healthy, everything else, um, more people working together in an abundance and everything else. When you really follow it through, what you're finding is there's still an elite group of people that are above all this, that are controlling this, that are making the decisions on behalf of everybody else. They could control it, they could decide to thin the planet slowly but surely. You know, um, they, there's still this element of um, this is going to help those people that we, me in particular, and I'm sure many people listening to this, their heart goes out to someone who's on the street right now. And I'm fortunate enough that I know what I know and I can work the way I work and I've created a life for myself. But I'm in the system too, you know, and I'm contributing too to the same thing because, you know, whether it's the shopkeeper who's getting by on a minimum wage who's doing okay or the person who's on the street, either way, and when I'm interacting with those people and I'm, I'm good, all's good for me, I'm contributing to the system. So is the answer a new system that spreads the wealth everywhere and gives it to um, a universal basic income out to everyone so no one has to worry? It sounds good. It sounds um, feasible. It sounds possible. It sounds like, oh, that would fix and help out all those people that I do actually care about. And it does rattle me and it does shake me to the core spiritually that this is going on and it's getting worse. But there seems to be more to it than that because um, it doesn't appear that this little group of people that are suggesting that we do this um, were anything other than the creators of this in the first place. Um, we're all creating it together. We're collectively agreeing with it and creating it, make no mistake. But there are a group of people that are really, really lapping up the situation, the scenario, the way it is. And as more people are dropping into the lower class and the middle class is diminishing, very few are getting from there up to there. Some of that's growing. Um, 
it's making it more obvious that these people need them even more. So that group of people actually end up um, having the say over what happens next. And that, think about it. I don't believe that the people that are really, really needing help and getting this universal basic income are going to get what they really need. In fact, I think more of us are going to end up with there and them as small business gets broken down and bigger business takes over and everything goes through a global distribution system like an Amazon or something like that and all other things. Great giant technocracies and then computers are taking over and artificial intelligence and away we go and people are needed less but they can go and have more fun, don't worry. Well, I'm watching people getting arrested all around the world because they're not keeping their distance. You know, um, I'm, and those two people are actually quite willing to get the, the, the current little Rus, the current Rona, they're quite willing to get it. And like that, we don't care. We want to have social connection and touch and whatever else. And whether you agree with that or not, um, you know, what are they then spreading it to everyone else? Is this the argument we're going down the track with? But watching people getting arrested and even getting deplatformed for saying things that they shouldn't say and all this sort of stuff. Um, as we get closer to this, it's not looking more like freedom for people. Check it out for yourself. It's looking more like the opposite. It's looking more like a few in charge of the many. And going back to US Constitution, which seems really under threat at the moment, as does Australian and everything else, um, the government meant to be working for the people but it certainly appears that that's not the case. Um, yeah, and there's a whole other conversation about who are the bad guys in government, in US government, who aren't, and who's been painted as the bad guys, and who aren't, etc. which I won't go into here. But um, just wanted to share those thoughts. Universal basic income, is it the answer or is it the devil in disguise? Um, I believe the answer is us all waking up together, creating cottage industry, working together, exchanging more, um, letting the system collapse all around itself, looking after the people that we see around us in our communities more and more. And I believe there's a will and a desire to do that inside of people. And the more we look after each other, the less we feel stress and press, pressured and pushed ourselves. And the more we actually feel like I've got enough energy to look after that person over there. But the very system that's creating these people to have nothing and it's creating us to be stressed and running and chasing our tail forever and ever is the same system that proposes to have the solution to our problem and there's an old thing problem reaction solution someone's part of creating a problem but with a hidden hand conscious or unconscious and then there's a reaction to that problem and the same people that created the problem come back in and offer the solution food for thought I think we're better off together and I think we're better off working through this together and I don't think anyone outside of ourselves has, this, has the solution for us including government and they should be working for us and they should be answering to us and when we stop buying things from these places and we stop feeding this system um, it will fall down it will break down but more of us need to realize that and more of us need to look at the person next door and say I'm going to come buy off you lots of love happy new year from the heart. Hope we can have an awesome year this year. I think 2020 is a massive year of vision, 2020 vision, to see the system at play. If you haven't yet seen it and you're not liking the words I'm saying, open up to the possibilities. 2021 is 2020 plus one. So we're just moving on from it. But I think this is the year that we speak out for ourselves and we start actually operating together, taking our power. Lots of love.